Welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen, welcome if you're new. Today we are going to go through Nova Resin. Not just burrs in particular, though I've got all the burrs on display because they're easy to get on camera and because I use them all the time. But we're going to go over what they are, how they work, and also we're going to have a look at them on a microscopic level. So I've chucked a couple burrs under the microscope. I've also prepared this. So this is a plate of glass which closely replicates opal. And I've gone from the 60 grit all the way over here all the way through all the grits and we're going to show you with a microscope what it looks like on the gr glass surface what it actually does and that'll help you guys decide when you can move on from grit to grit because though visually it's pretty hard to see you'll see that every single one of these has a little bit of an action but at the same time it also can't do a lot of things there are limitations and also not every step will always be necessary and you'll be able to make that determination and i'll give you a bit of a guide on that one but yeah we'll have a look at that most of the time though in this video I'm going to be popping up microscope shots so you can have a real good look. So starting off with the diamond resin, it is exactly what it sounds like. It's got a few more things in it than just diamonds and resin. But with the 60 grit, the coarsest one, you can see a lot of those diamonds. It's that sparkliness, it's that slight bronzish looking color. That's probably the color of the diamonds, though you can get electroplated diamonds because it helps dissipate heat better into the resin. So it's one or the other. I don't know the secret recipe behind Diamond Pacific Nova resin, but I can take a pretty good guess at it. In essence, fillers, dyes, resin, and diamonds. It's going to be all of that combination, the exact ratio. Who knows? That's their secret. That's why they work so well. So if we want to have a closer look, we'll just have a look with the five times objective on the microscope. I have gone from five to a hundred times, so we can have some really good looks. But the five times is big enough to be able to see all these little diamonds, and you can see that there's some that are pretty heavily worn, but it's also gonna reveal some new ones. In the bottom right, you can see a 10 micron kind of particle size estimate on that diamond that's fully protruding. Just above it, you can see that there's some fresh ones poking through, and that's how it works. Similar to sintered diamond burrs, where you've got a, where you've got the base metal with diamonds impregnated in it all the way through. This one is just the same thing, but with resin. Pretty simple. Now, their action is not quite as simple as you would, you might originally think. So if we have a visual look at this glass slide with the black background, you can see, super foggy. If I chuck my finger behind it, you can still see through, but it is very foggy. And that lasts all the way up to the 280 grit. The 600 in the right angle, you'll see that it does fog up as well. But really, the heavy fog is just here in these three. This is basically still carving. This isn't really polishing, pre-polishing, nothing like that. These are still doing some brute force. And you can see that under the microscope. So for all of these pictures, I'm going to pick the 20 times objective on the microscope. If I pick the 100 times, it's way too much. It's way too close. This rough surface is so uneven that as you'll see, you can barely get a focus because you're really zoomed in and the surface needs to be somewhat flat to be able to get a good picture and you can't get that because it's too rough. And then the five times objective, you just don't get to see enough. It doesn't look as cool. The 20 times, if you have a look at the pictures for the fogs, really cool and a little bit surprising. We always say that these diamond resin burrs are just scratching the surface, but as you can see, it's doing a lot more than scratching the surface. It is absolutely obliterating the surface. It is blasting it apart. And because of that blasting apart, that's how you get this really, really foggy look. In the polished sections here, you can see that the light is bouncing straight back. That's because it's a nice, flat, smooth surface. It's hitting that surface and all the rays are coming straight back at us. Here, it's hitting, and then it's just scattering. It's scattering everywhere, which when you look at the microscope, you can understand why it is absolutely shattered. Now, once you get to the 600, so from dead on here, you can see that it's a little bit rough, and you can still feel it, but not so much. If I get it on the right angle like this, you can see it's all scratched up. This is where it's starting to become more of a scratch. So if you look at the magnified microscope image, you can see that it is scratched and I went fairly parallel so I went in one direction so you don't get a crisscross of scratches. It's all in the one direction, it's all just from the 600 burr and you can see it's doing exactly what you would expect. It's just doing these little kitty cat scratches all the way across the surface, really even, really good, really consistent and that's what you want to see. When you're doing it on a stone, this is the kind of texture you want to feel and see. It's when it's starting to lose its grip. This is where you really want to adopt, otherwise you start fumbling the stone a lot. Because by the time you've done the 1200, this is when it feels like it's smooth. Here, you're still getting a little bit of grip. It's quite good to handle the stone still. That's when the scratches begin, and then you can see with the 1200, to the naked eye, you really can't see much. If I grab this tissue and give it a good wipe, 
Most of the imperfections and scratches you can see are just on the glass itself. But if we look at the microscope, you'll be able to see exactly what the little scratches look like. Same with the 3000. The 3000 ones look pretty cool. They're starting to peter out. And with the 3000, I did a crisscross pattern. So you can see that the on the microscope, they are crisscrossing away. A really faint little scratch. Same with the 8000. Once we get to these 14 and 50,000, these are polishing burrs. So to the naked eye, you really can't see much. And even under the microscope, what you're seeing in the pictures are not exactly the scratches that those burrs have left. They're the scratches from the base glass itself, because the glass isn't perfectly polished. It's actually polished them up a little bit better than the base glass, but you can see that there's a lot of markings still, and the base glass has those markings. So they're just imperfections from the glass slides basically rubbing up against each other in the box. If we look at the slide itself, there's just nothing. It's basically a polished surface apart from a few minor imperfections and those visible ones, you know they're not from the burrs. So once you get to the 14,000, 50,000, you can see they really struggle to get rid of any of those pre-existing scratches. You really, if you're going to use a 50,000 burr, you almost have to use a 14 or at least at minimum the 8,000 beforehand. Otherwise, it's not actually going to be able to remove the scratches from something like a 3,000. It might if you give it a really long time, but it's not going to be a speedy process. So I hope this gives a good idea of what you're looking for, because this is exactly the same on the stone that you're working. It's just that there's a little bit of color depending on the stone and it's always going to be a little bit different, but you can always see this same foggy pattern. Once you get good with the stone, you'll be able to recognize it really well and you'll probably just get a feel for it and get a timing for it anyway. The only other thing I would mention is when do you go from Nova Pacific diamond points to something like a cerium oxide or an aluminium oxide or a diamond paste? That's really up to you. Visually to the human eye, you can't really see anything. Like, even though that surface of the 3000 is pretty scuffed on the microscope, to the naked eye, it's really not that bad. So I go from the 3000 and go through to the polish. But you could say the same thing for the 1200. The 1200 grey, this little guy right here, a lot of people, especially with cabbing wheels and flat laps in particular, with carving, people tend to go a bit higher. But with a lot of the cabbing wheels and flat laps, you just go with the 1200 and then switch over to your metal oxide polishing and you get a good finish. And I think that's mostly because of the speed and the aggression at which those machines kind of scratch the surface compared to the burrs. The burrs are much more gentle. You can just go from that through to the final polish because visually you can see a little bit of markings. Most of that's just fingerprints because it's really hard to keep this glass clean when it's so highly polished. But you can see, compared to the 600, the 1200 is where it just tips over the edge and I would be more than happy for people to call that a pre-polish. It's definitely not a final polish, I wouldn't leave it at that. It doesn't give that glossy mirror finish that the 3000 and above can kind of do a lot better. The 3000 isn't even very glossy, but it's definitely pre-polished enough for you to go ahead and go metal oxide polishing. Whereas the 600, definitely not. You're going to get that scratch surface come through and then below that you're not even getting a scratch surface you're getting that almost moon crater look it's uh it's very aggressively scratched i hope that helps i'll pop up a few other pictures here as i'm going through the outro but they're incredible tools very complex and simple at the same time i'm sure they keep the secret recipe closely guarded to their chest you can make your own and they can work i've done it in the past but it just isn't quite as good as you could have seen from a previous video that i did i am working on finding a cheaper version of it and it's got its pros and cons and it'll just come down to price and what people value and what they think is better or not so hoping to get those manufactured and chucked up on the store as well but i'm also going to keep the nova points on the store because they are they're just they just work incredibly well they've done so for many a decade and for many a decade more one last look at the slide that's what you look for on the surface of the stones once you can get to a 3000 ish you're you're pretty much home. Even the 1200, hit that with a metal oxide, you can get mirror-like. Good luck, happy carving, or cutting, or cabbing, or whatever you do. All these principles apply, and I'll see you in the next video. Catch you later, guys.